Welcome back to Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. On this Thursday after Ash Wednesday, we find ourselves at the Roman Station Church of San Giorgio al Valabro. Today's Roman Station Church is dedicated to St. George. The church is located next to the Arch of Janus in the Rione of Ripa. In the ancient Roman Velabrum, the name of the low valley where the church sits, at the foot of the Capitoline and the Palatine Hills. For those of you who don't know Rome that well, it's near the area of the Roman Forum. The first religious building attested in the place of the current basilica was a diaconia, funded by Pope Gregory I commonly known as Pope St. Gregory the Great. A diaconia is a church originally administered by a deacon as a center for charitable works. We see along the wall placards noting the eminent cardinals who have been cardinal deacons of San Giorgio a Valabro. For example, Cardinal Alphonse Maria Stickler, a consistent defender of the position that the Tridentine Mass was not forbidden or suppressed and an advocate for the preservation of priestly celibacy in the discipline of the West. It is the patrimony of the traditional liturgy whence comes this very Roman Station Church pilgrim itinerary. I'm reminded often during the canon of the Mass of this pilgrimage when I hear the names of the saint martyrs. We visit so many of their tombs during this Lenten pilgrimage. And here we see the placard for John Henry Cardinal Newman, brought into the church in 1845 by Blessed Dominic Barbary, an Italian Passionist. Cardinal Newman was recently canonized a saint in 2019. The 13th century fresco in the apse depicts Christ in the second coming, standing on the cosmos, accompanied by the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. George on his horse to the left, and St. Peter and St. Sebastian to the right. The work is now attributed to Cavallini. St. George has a white horse, which is his iconographic attribute. If the horse, for example, is another color, it carries another soldier saint, like the red horse belonging to St. Demetrius. The palm tree next to Christ is a symbol here of the resurrection. The current church was built during the seventh century by Pope Leo II, who dedicated it to St. Sebastian. The church's plan is irregular, indeed slightly trapezoidal, as a result of the frequent additions to the building. The interior columns are almost randomly arranged, having been taken from sundry Roman temples. The church sits in what was formerly the Greek quarter in Rome, where Greek-speaking merchants, civil and military officers, and monks of the Byzantine Empire lived. The nearby Santa Maria in Cosmidin, for example, was known as In Scola Greca at the time. Pope Zachary, who was of Greek origin, moved the relic of St. George to here from Cappadocia, so that this saint had a church dedicated in his honor in the West, something quite unique in the 8th century, well before the spread of his veneration with the return of the Crusaders from the East. Through this arched opening underneath the altar, we can see the relics of St. George, part of his cranium, the head of his lance, and part of his battle standard. This sort of tile decoration is called cosmetesque. The cosmetesque style, this style of geometric decorative inlay stonework, takes its name from the family of the Cosmati which flourished in Rome during the 12th and 13th centuries and practiced the art of mosaic. The Cosmati's work is peculiar in that it consists of glass mosaic in combination with marble. Although the Cosmati of 12th century Rome are the eponymous craftsmen of the style, they do not seem to have been the first to develop the art. A similar style may be seen in the pavement of the Benedictine Abbey of Monte Cassino, built from the years 1066 to 1071 using workers from Constantinople, making it likely that the geometric style was heavily influenced by Byzantine floor mosaics. However, the technique is distinct from Cosmati floors, which are made from various shapes and sizes of stone, 
a property quite different from the opus tessellatum mosaics, in which the patterns are made from small units, which are all the same size and shape. The stone used by the Kazmati artists were often salvaged material, upcycling from the ruins of ancient Roman buildings, the large roundels being the carefully cut cross-sections of Roman columns. Although built in the 7th century, what we see now in the church is a result of heavy restorations done in the 1920s. The superintendent of monuments of Rome completed a more radical restoration program with the aim of restoring the building's medieval character and freeing it from later additions. This was done by returning the floor to its original level, and so exposing the column bases, reopening the ancient windows that gave light to the central nave, restoring the apse, and generally removing numerous accretions from the other most recent restorations. During this process, fragments now displayed here were found, which indicated that a Scola Cantonum had existed on this site, attributed to the period of Pope Gregory IV in the 9th century. We saw an example of a Scola Cantorum yesterday at Santa Sabina, and we will see a future one at San Clemente. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday after Ash Wednesday at the Roman Station Church of San Giorgio al Valabro. Please share this video with your family and friends, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a beat of this Roman Station Church Linton pilgrimage itinerary. I'm Jacob with Crux Stationalis. Thank you for watching, and we will see you tomorrow at Santi Giovanni e Paolo.